Welcome to today's episode of The Growth Zone. I am Christian Bartsch. What is the core benefit of listening to this show? Business leaders in corporate and privately held companies gain insights into trends and strategies that provide them with a competitive advantage in the marketplace. Each episode focuses on an area such as marketing, sales, innovation or funding that is absolutely critical to the growth of companies, whether they are startups or corporate global players, where management needs to juggle the challenges of market entry or knowing how to navigate the uncertainties of disruptive developments. Mind feeding is where clarity evolves and helps solving organizational challenges. For those who listen to the entire episode, I have a special surprise gift. I am working on some great guests that are industry leaders in management, innovation and marketing. Let's get started on today's episode. So today I'm here with Chris Mercer and we're going to be talking about how can measurement marketing help SaaS companies grow their subscriber base. Um, Chris, you're based in Austin, Texas, right? That's correct. Great. So can you please tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure. So we started years and years ago uh, with a development organization, just a you know kind of doing WordPress sites, that sort of thing, and, and building out an agency where we wanted to differentiate ourselves. Kind of moved into CRO, doing conversion rate optimization, and started really building a, a CRO agency. The main point of CRO is obviously to improve conversion rates and kind of improving the results people are getting. But in order to improve those things, you really need to be able to measure for that. So we started doing a real deep dive into Google Analytics and eventually Tag Manager and, and um, pass that into different reporting platforms like Google Data Studio. And what ended up happening for us is we realized really, really quickly that there were a lot of people that were doing conversion rate optimization. There were not a lot of people that were really, truly, usefully measuring their marketing results. They weren't using the tools properly. They weren't asking the right questions. They weren't doing the right things with the numbers that they did have if they were correct. Uh, and so we started moving and sharing with our clients sort of things that we had set up for them in terms of their measurement. Very quickly, clients started recommending other clients to learn about their numbers. And that's where measurementmarketing.io, uh, our current company, was born. And now we just sort of spend our time helping people to learn how to use all these incredible tools that are out there. They're incredibly powerful. They can sometimes be a little overwhelming at times, uh, but they can you know, help us understand what our results are and how we're getting our results. Yeah, that's great because when you think of it, there's, there's so much out there and it depends very much on, on what you're looking for, whether you're just looking for subscribers, growth, maybe getting people as actually to buy or pay straight away. It's such a different thing as well. So... Um, I'm very keen to find out so how actually um, this measurement marketing strategy that you use, how it can help SaaS companies uh, grow their subscriber base. Because there's so many different kind of um, subscriber strategies. Some do like this free, free premium. So you have the free account and some have the premium. And so, some go and say, uh, no, nothing free with us. You can 
use it now straight away at a very low price or at a higher price, depending on what you want. But you have to pay something. And of course, it's a little bit different depending on who you are targeting, whether they're willing to pay as well straight away for a tool that they haven't tried out yet. Right. That's that's ex that's exactly right. And I think, you know, I like personally, I like trying to keep things as simple as possible. So it's always about knowing what the result is that you're getting. Uh, but more importantly, it's about knowing how you're getting those results and, and why you need them. To your point earlier, there are companies that are out there that are SaaS companies that have the the mission kind of like that, you know, the original Facebook mission. They're all trying to be the next unicorn. And that mission was just get a bunch of users and show these big giant headlines to get VC companies to invest in you so that you can get more users so that, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and grow big enough to eventually you will figure out, you know, how to make money, kind of what Twitter's running into, right? Where it's like, okay, we need to, we have all these users. Now we got to figure out how to monetize the situation. And there are, there is that sort of model. Um, I think the the other more stable model is the one where obviously you're generating revenue and you're able to, um, what we would, what we reference is basically just forecasting what the revenue is. So knowing that, Hey, I'm making X amount of dollars or, or, or pounds or whatever the currency is from the users, mm -hmm. but also here's how we're doing that. Meaning here's how much a user is worth on day zero, on day 30, on day 60, on day 90, et cetera. Um, so that you can actually start to, to, you know, measure against that and see if, if your, your marketing mechanisms are working the way that they're supposed to. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, then you can actually understand who are your ABC customers and um, who do you really need to target, who are going to stay with you and are going to actually uh, use the system in a proper, proper way that you actually can generate more revenue. Hmm. Exactly, exactly right. You know, for us, it, it comes down to three, three sort of key steps. The first is figuring out the the planning stuff, right? So figuring out what questions you're trying to answer, what information will you need to be able to collect to get the answers, what actions will you take based upon the answers. And there's a lot of people that don't effectively plan because they miss that last part. They don't think about the actions they're going to take based upon the the information that they're getting, right? But based on the answers hmm. they're getting. Um, so that's kind of that that first phase is planning out. Then you actually go through the build where you are setting up all of your measurement infrastructure, whether that's Google Analytics or something else, um, where you're figuring out, okay, how are we going to tell this measurement platform where the traffic is coming from? How are we going to tell the measurement traffic what, or the, the measurement platform what type of results we want to tie that traffic to? How are we going to structure all this information so that it tells an effective story? of which traffic is causing which results, right? And, and how that's happening. Um, so you've got this planning stage, you've got this build stage where you build out your measurement platform and you structure the data properly. And then you have that third and final stage, which is where you're acting on everything, right? You're, you're looking at reports, which are now more likely to tell a story. It's not just a bunch of data. And I think a lot of challenging, uh, a lot of companies have challenges with that, where they, they don't have a, um, a, a, a little bit of data. They have lots of data. They have too much data and it's coming forth in these, in these, you know, just inundated. They're they're getting just doused in data constantly, but they don't necessarily know what to do with it because it's just a bunch of randomness. Um, and it's not necessarily presented in a way that naturally tells the story of what the results are and how we're achieving those results. And so when you have your data presented in a story, you're able to more clearly take action on it. You're able to start forecasting. So instead of saying, hey, next week we're gonna, you know, bring in this much money in revenue or this many new users. You start saying things like, well, next week, we're going to spend X amount on Facebook. Of those, 1% will come through and, and create a new account. Of those, within seven days, we'll activate via emails or push notifications to create this much in terms of dollars and cents. You know, And then you measure against those forecasts. And that's where you will very clearly see where what what in that process, right? what, did, what in your idea of your in your mechanism, what's working and what's not. So it's really that planning, building, and then you act upon things. I think a lot of people, it's so easy to get data. It's so easy to get feedback from things without it being structured properly that people get caught up in, in uh, again, just sort of getting confused by all of it instead of structuring it. Yeah, because then they, they've just got the data. They don't know how to use it, and they might even miss uh, understand it and, and then exactly. click around the systems, change the ads, and then the, end, the ads don't perform at all anymore. Maybe they even gets even worse and they get the wrong kind of customers who are actually just testing the stuff and then decide it's not for them. Because maybe you are targeting medium-sized companies and you've got attracting small companies and they notice, oh, this is too big. I just, I'm just a two-people business. I don't need a system that's made for 20 people. And you, of course, uh, have people signing on and then revoking. Maybe they even demand refunds and that. It's a huge pain then with the wrong 
strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because like even in our case, so we we aren't quite SaaS, but we have a similar model, right? We're kind of learning as a service. And so it's we have a training system that people can come in. And so when they become part of the introduction to our brand, we're measuring for a journey, right? From somebody who has never heard about measuremarketing.io to somebody that is now a recurring member of the Measure Marketing Academy, right? The main sort of flagship program that we have for learning mm -hmm. all this stuff. And so we'll measure, so we will, our current system is we will have like, for example, when this podcast goes live, we'll send traffic to the podcast and we will measure with the intent of, okay, did we move our pr prospective audience to what we would call offsite brand aware, meaning they're on your site, they're on your properties, but they are now slightly aware of the measurement marketing.io brand. And we measure for that, you know, based upon what the ad platforms are telling us with the interaction of the ads. From there, we'll start moving individuals into the, okay, well, now they're sort of sort of aware, right? Not, not entirely aware of us, but kind of aware of us. Now we start getting them on-site aware, which is, okay, let's bring them to measuremarketing.io. Maybe it's an infographic or a blog post or something along those lines. Maybe it's the free toolbox membership um, that we've got where they can engage and interact with the brand a little bit. And that would be the on-site awareness, right? And then once they engage at that level, then we move them into, okay, let's talk about the Measure Marketing Academy. Uh, and and what that can do for you. Now, some people will do that, you know, in practically the same session or the same day. Others will take a few weeks, but we have an expectation of sort of how that marketing is supposed to work. And we're always measuring against it to see how much of this group of this sort of phase one of our customer, the people who are offsite aware, how much of those are coming in onsite aware, how much of those are becoming leads, how many of those are creating an account and how many of those, because to your point earlier, it's not just about the creation of the account, it's are they coming back? And we want to make sure that we have the retention numbers as well. There's there's absolutely no use for us to get somebody who uses the academy for a month. That, that doesn't do them any service. It doesn't do us a service. So we got to make sure that they're using the academy over you know six months to a year because this is a big, big topic. And we want to make sure that we've, we're have we building relationships with customers for the long term when it comes to learning how to measure things. Yeah, and then they can as well go and um, buy add-ons and other services and so on because it's working and they're using it and they see the value. That's exactly they trust right. You. That's exactly right. So they start off with this initial, and then, and then to your point, there's there's other ways to engage with the brand, and that's what we're doing as a brand. Is is then we're obviously you surveying the customers and kind of doing traditional marketing to make sure that we're satisfying what they need, and then also providing kind of the the path of where they're headed, right? As as we see that come across, because that's what helps our brand to continuously expand and make sure that you know not only do we grow market share, but that we uh, protect. Right, that that market share. So building the moat around the castle, so to speak, because we want to make sure that we're retaining. We don't. It's not about uh, you know having a bunch of people come in and create an account and then leave thirty days later. Yeah, and the advantage is as well with with your service that you've got as well this um, academy as an online self service, as far as I understand. So it doesn't matter where I'm in the world, I can use it at my leisure. And even if I'm traveling around for whatever reason, I can always go and consume the knowledge as I go. Or as I'm working through a project or anything where I notice, oh, I need to listen to that again. How was that? How, how was I supposed to do it? Yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. that's exactly right. And then, you know, like in our case, we also have instructors and things like that that they can reach out to to get to get some help. But the instructor system, like that's a perfect example of, you know, measuring for the product and is because again, what we it's all numbers, right? It's it, we're looking mm -hmm. and say, okay, we expect that let's say in the beginning it was let's get to, you know, four or five months of you know consistent membership rebuilding like in, in our example and so if we're not seeing that what can we do to make sure that happens and so it was like oh we need you know we have support through email but can we do support in a different way so we build out an entire support system what we call ask instructor support system and the students now can pass over videos and screenshots to the instructors. The instructors send over videos and screenshots back. So it's kind of like having a consultant on call now. But that, just you know, doing that, it was the, the same service, just presented in a different way, in a better way uh, for, the, for the end users, increased our retention rates, right? Which allows us to, to spend more now if we needed to. We don't unfortunately have to, but if we needed to, we can spend a little more on the CPA in the beginning for the cost per acquisition because we've, we know that long term on average, uh, that particular customer is going to be worth a little more than they once were. And again, we've got other benefits of that in that people tell other people about the academy, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and so and I think with but that wasn't us sitting around kind of 
coming up with ideas. It was us looking at the numbers. It was us looking at our measurement and saying, this number could be better. How do we make this number better? Then we make the, the decision, put the, you know, execute on the plan, and then we measure against the number, right? So our forecast was, okay, the asset structure support system in its new way will improve retention. So instead of an average, let's say four months, it's now, you know, seven or eight months. And is it doing that, right? So once we put it into play, it's like, is it, are, are people doing that measuring through, you know, cohorts? And, um, you know, so far that's been working, which is great. But, but it, again, I want to emphasize, it wasn't just a bunch of people, because I think a lot of times people think that it's like, oh, they had this really cool idea. It's like, yes, but the numbers told us to spend some time to think about really cool ideas to improve the numbers, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and when I uh, look at your um, list of courses that you offer, it's obviously not just about uh, Google Analytics, uh, so many other things, how to create more traffic and I suppose as well, Google advertising and other topics that you cover. From a, from a measurement perspective, yes. So mm -hmm. we, we don't teach like how to use Google Ads to do traffic, but we will talk about using Google Ads for retargeting, how to use Tag Manager to in, improve your retargeting efforts, right? How to, how to measure for the results that you're trying to get. Um, there's a lot of strategy uh, courses that are back there about, because I think a lot of it is sometimes it is about, you know, how do I set a destination goal in Google Analytics? But let's face it, there are thousands of YouTube videos that people can find that will teach you how to actually use these tools. But I think the, the harder part is how do you think about the tool, you know, and, and what a goal should even be, you know, um, uh, you know, give you something that we, we teach to our members. We teach ACE goals, which is this concept of you need to really measure for three key uh, stages in your journeys. First is you have to measure, you have to know when a customer is giving you behaviors that are basically telling you they are now aware of whatever the journey is you want them to be on, right? That they are, they are now aware of that journey. So that's sort of the A in this part. Then you need to know when they've completed that journey, that's the C. And then you need to know as they engage along the way, you have to you have to have a measurement system that does that. So the ACE, awareness, did, were they aware of the customer journey? Did they complete the customer journey? Did they engage along the way? And to give you kind of a real world example of that, uh, again, going back to the academy, right? We, you know, we eat our own dog food is kind of the phrasing I think the tech industry mm -hmm. uses, right? So we do this on yeah. our, with our own stuff. But when they load the academy page, when they are there, we will measure for our, th at that point, we say, okay, the page is loaded. They are now aware of the academy. When they hit the thank you page after completing a successful, you know, account and creating their account, well, now we say, okay, they've completed the journey. When they see that cart page in the middle, we go, okay, they've now engaged in that journey. And, and of course, there's, there's various stages and steps for that. So just in that, that sort of generic model, we can see what the results are, how many sales we're getting, but we also know our, our drop-offs in between so we can measure for, com for conversation. So uh, at measuremarketing.io, we, we think about it in terms of that, you know, if, if this was an if you had an offline store, you would have to talk to people. You would have to welcome them. Ideally, you would have to welcome them to your bookstore or your shoe store or whatever it is. You would you would help them find what they needed. Um, and I think digital marketers forget that they are still having a conversation with users. It's just that now it's the website is having te technically it's the web page that they're on is having a conversation with the users. And so what we do is we measure for that conversation based upon the behaviors that the individuals are doing. So if they load certain pages, we can, you know, sort of hypothesize what they're doing, the conversation that they're having. Um, we can even measure so far as to say if they're there 10 seconds later versus somebody loads a page and leaves within 10 seconds. That's two different conversations we need to have with those two different behaviors, you know, that are going on. We can measure for that. And so with, with measurement marketing, we think about it like measurement is how you listen for their side of the conversation. And we do like tag manager and analytics and data studio reports and all that helps us to hear their side of things. And then marketing, where we're changing maybe the targeting of audiences or copy on the pages or the different offers. Marketing is how we adjust our side of the conversation to keep the conversation going in the direction we want. Yeah, I mean, you think now as well, there's so much going on about uh Uh, tracking and so on with different manufacturers like Apple and Google are changing things. And now, of course, Google is wanting to introduce a new kind of tracking system. And then the WordPress developers say, we, we see this as a security risk. Everybody's uh, pushing back on Flock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, if you've got the data and you can uh, in real time actually react to it and, and make sense out of it, you can use the opportunity of the win that you've, that you've got. But if you try to 
do like retargeting nowadays. Like for instance, Facebook has a big problem because the retargeting doesn't work in many areas anymore properly. Right. And then your your lookalike audience is after a few weeks messed up because it's got the wrong people in it. It's no longer the people who, who were uh, going to buy. Yeah, it's not not who you think it is. Exactly right. Yeah, and it's 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 why then suddenly uh, campaigns that used to really work very well they all go down the drain, and it just doesn't help you. But as you say, with the measurement, knowing the right information, as well be able as well to act properly with it because you can really work out what's relevant instead of having lots of stuff there and not really knowing how to filter it out, and then you get confused. That's not helpful. So yeah, sounds. Sounds really good to uh, use that kind of way, especially when you want to grow subscriber base. You want to have as well the right people who are going to stick, up, stay there, and really um, tell others as well to go because they then as well not just referrals. You get other people who talk about it, and then others find out what's this mm -hmm, new product, and they start trying it out as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly right. And if, of course, if that's not happening, maybe that's because it's not easy for that to happen, and you can give them a way to do that within your, you know, your SaaS system to share or, you know, create referrals for yourself if they're not naturally doing that. Um, you know, so it's, there's, I think there's, there's lots of opportunities that, that data has. I think it's interesting that you bring up what's going on right now in the technical aspect of it with, you know, things like flock with Google, and I'm sure they'll probably come up with a few other things. Um, mm. and, uh, you know, and Apple, cause that's just the tech platforms that are essentially, making and it's going to like there's there's no way around this this is a trend there will be less data available for us to measure from those platforms right it's just going to happen because that's just a mm -hmm. big mega trend it's changing the other thing trend is of course g companies you know or countries like with uh what happened with gdpr with europe right so yeah. you've got laws coming out the u.s will certainly have one california just recently created they tend to set the trend for the u.s and so there'll eventually be one for the u.s so it's like that's happening. So you've got countries and nations that are that are making it a little harder to collect to the to the level of of individual data. You've got the tech platforms that are making it a little harder to collect to the level of individual data. And you have, of course, the market, which is the biggest of them all, the individuals saying, I don't think I want to be collected to the level of an individual, right? And so there's this these three gigantic mega trends that are creating this perfect storm in the data world uh, that I'm I'm strangely excited about because it's going to force everybody uh, to get to, to, to think a little differently about data and to realize that there is such a thing as statistics and sample size. I think math is going to come into vogue a little bit more. I think pa people will focus on trends and patterns, which is what they should have been doing in the first place. But but you don't think you're supposed to in the beginning because you think you're tracking every single person. You think you have this quote unquote accurate data. Uh, we mm -hmm. always call the accuracy the A word here because it's like there is no accurate data. It doesn't exist, right? It's all it's all the truth is in the trend, the power is in the pattern. Like that's what you look at, um, and that's what you can use to forecast results. You know, and so you know, like a, a good perfect example, somebody would come to us and they'll say, and this is a common question. So I get it if people are asking this. Um, but when you first start out, you ask questions like, well, we're just trying to figure out how people are using our blog, or we're just trying to figure out how people are using our website. And we're just trying to figure out what members do once they come into the, the SaaS platform, right into our platform. And my response is 100% the same every time. What are they supposed to be doing? What was the plan in the first? How is your blog supposed to be working, right? It's not how are they using our homepage. You start asking better questions, more more useful questions. Questions like, well, they're supposed to be using our homepage, and twenty five percent of them are supposed to be using the top nav. Thirty percent of them are supposed to be taking the above the fold call to action. Twenty five percent will use the bottom nav links to move forward to whatever they're looking for. You know, and the other fifteen percent, you know, leave the page or whatever. That's how the homepage is supposed to operate. Right. And now when you have that forecast, you measure against that forecast using these platforms and you very quickly see where you're correct about things and where you're not. Um, I think in this world of data, there's a there's a big challenge with people. They want to be right all the time when in reality, you're going to be wrong most of the time. It's just a matter of the degrees of how wrong you are. Right. And you can be a little bit wrong all the time and still grow companies, you know, it, 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 massive ways because you're you you got the trend right and that's really what matters is those trends and patterns that's what we look for in when it comes to data and i think that with what's going on with gdpr and everything else coming out is just it gives everybody the opportunity to refocus and to get 
tuned back into trends and patterns and realized they don't need to know every single thing about every single person. They just need to know what most of the people are doing most of the time. And that can they can build a business from. Yeah. Anyway, the, the key information that you might have on a one-to-one -one person basis, you have anyway in your software inside because you know who, who buys, who's using, who's logging in, how long are they logging in and so on. These things you can track, but everything else. And then it's anyway not that necessarily having to be so deep because if the person doesn't buy and isn't going to come back again, you don't need to Is know. Is it even relevant? Their, right. Yeah. You don't need to know their name. It's like somebody right. passing right. by your shop. You don't go and ask everybody, please uh, sign here for what's the name, email address and everything. I need to know. And they're <laughs> so going true. to freak out. Yeah, it's so true. It's funny when you say that because I, I I always try to to think about what the, what would this be like if it was an offline thing? Would we do the same thing in the offline world? And a lot of things that digital marketers try to do in the online world would never work in the offline world. Uh, you know, that's a perfect perfect use case, right? You don't need to collect every single bit of data from somebody walking by your store. You know, it's because yeah. that's not necessarily relevant. You know, when, yeah, when you when you're oh, go ahead. Yeah, we'd have in the city center, we'd have uh, these turnstiles where you have to go through. You can't bypass them. <laughs> and it automatically registers uh, with RFID, registers all your contact details and so on, and straight away you pass through them. And if you haven't got a phone with you, sorry, you have to go back again. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, there's 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 a bit there's definitely out there. It's it's so easy to collect data that I think everybody just thought they had to collect everything, and you really don't. You just need to know enough to be able to re rely on the trends and the patterns, and that's what will get you through. Um, sometimes more data doesn't make it make it more useful. You know, kind of an example of that would be like if you think about e-commerce. If if the your cart system, your platform that's collecting your merchant process or whatever it is, is telling you, hey, you made you know a million dollars. But then you look in Google Analytics and Google Analytics says you made $975,000. They're both basically saying you made about a million bucks, you know, and, and to spend, maybe you could spend time, effort, and energy to make sure that Google Analytics was more accurate. But even if you got it to say, okay, you made a million dollars, it's not more useful. It's still saying you made about a million dollars and you already have that information. So I think as marketers, it's important to realize, okay, enough. At a certain point, you have enough. You just need to get the trend and the pattern so that you can forecast what your results and how are going to be, you know, in the coming weeks and months, you know, and then you measure against those. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. And that, that helps people get out of that data for data sake thing. Yeah. They just, they just freak out eventually because they can't use it. It's just too much. So, um, It was great uh, speaking with you about all these special topics. And if people want to get in contact with you, Chris, how can they get to know you, get contact or even participate in your course or use your services? In that? Sure. So measurementmarketing.io is the name of our organization. So you just go to measurementmarketing.io to learn more about uh, our company. We do have, uh, I mentioned earlier, we have the, the Measurement Marketing Academy, but we have a free membership as well for people that kind of want to just get a little idea of what the membership site's like and, and get access. We actually give away all of the tools uh, that we that we create for our members. And it comes with some weekly training back there as well. Um, something we call the toolbox membership. So if you go to measurementmarketing.io forward slash the growth zone. So measurementmarketing.io forward slash the growth zone. It'll take you to that page where you can uh, create your free account there. Cool. Um, I'll add it as well in the comment text so that it's easy for those who want to copy it out or click on the link. Yeah, it was great um, speaking to you. And yeah, I'm sure uh, sometime in the future we'll be talking about this again, either like now on over the distance or sometime maybe in the US. I look forward to it either way. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So it was great. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Growth Zone with Christian Bartsch. Thank you for listening. Please leave a review or rating here on iTunes or on podchaser.com. If you found the content helpful, then share it on social media. I would like to invite you to follow our show so that you don't miss the upcoming interviews with leaders in the market. Simply visit the website follow.prmediareach.com.
www.ecofactory.com. I will be adding the link also to the description of this episode, so that you just need to click on that link. For those of you who are listening and signing up to follow the show, I have reserved a free copy of the Ultimate Guide on Content Marketing. This is the strategy that got me top corporate clients like McDonald's, Linde, Hewlett Packard, Deutsche Bank, Volvo and many others. That strategy has been working for over 10 years. It also got me contacts with police, transport authorities, military and several universities and even leading research institutes. For sure, it also worked wonders as it got me many small, medium and sized entrepreneurs and enterprises as clients. And that even included international clients from all around the world. The link to sign up for our free broadcasting service and the guide is follow.prmediareach.com That will give you access to the most recent version of my ultimate guide on content marketing. You can follow me as well on Twitter by using the Twitter handle CAP Barge. That's spelled Charlie Alpha Papa Bravo Alpha Romeo Tango Sierra Charlie Hotel. Yes, that is CAP Barge. Charlie Alpha Papa Bravo Alpha Romeo Tango Sierra Charlie Hotel. 